the headlines in the southeast today. The search for missing migrants continues in the channel after four died and dozens were rescued yesterday. We're live in Dover with more. Kent County Council warns hundreds of Ukrainian families face homelessness this Christmas as hosting agreements come to an end. And walking to meet Santa, the brave little girl who overcame huge obstacles after developing a tumour to fulfil her dream. Hello. The search for people missing at sea continues today after yesterday's tragedy in the Channel. Four people died and 39 were recovered from the water in the early hours of yesterday morning. Charities say France and Britain must work better together to stop further loss of life. All the drama that uh, will come and also loss of life and, and that's it. It, there's no other solution than to have a real agreement for legal and safe roads and to do proper welcoming in our countries. It's about France, it's about England, but it's about all Europe. Well, Piers Hopkirk is live in Dover for us now. Piers, that search operation is still underway today. That's right, Ellie. Uh, the searches began at first light today, but they are in marked contrast to yesterday. Yesterday, while there was still some hope of finding people alive out there in the channel, all available resources were put out there, lifeboats, helicopters, the French and English Navy. Today, though, the search has been scaled down. They're simply using drones, and I think that is an acknowledgement that at this late stage they are simply searching for bodies. It is thought that there are four people still unaccounted for. Now, yesterday's tragedy has once again uh, propelled the issue of migrant boat crossings up the political agenda and there are campaigners here in Kent who believe this latest tragedy indicates that the current approach simply isn't working. Everybody I know is, is absolutely devastated that yet more lives have been lost in the channel. It, it's, it's horrific. It's, it's like watching a car crash in slow motion. You know, you, you know it's going to happen. You want to stop it, but you can't. The fact is we could stop it. We could stop it overnight by offering people safe routes. And I think the government is, is wedded to a path that means that they're not going to do that. But that's the only way that we're going to stop this. Well, the Home Secretary and her French counterpart have uh, pledged to smash the people smuggling gangs who they say lie behind this problem. In a joint statement, Suella Bravman and Gérard Darmanin said the tragedy showed the importance of working closely together. Piers, thank you. Hundreds of Ukrainian families in Kent face homelessness in the run-up to Christmas, says the County Council, which is calling for clarity from central government on future funding for host families. The Homes for Ukraine scheme offers payments to families who host Ukrainians fleeing war, but the current round of government funding only runs until March. The authorities say they already have 2,086 Ukrainians in sponsorship agreements across the county, and they're anticipating as many as 500 Ukrainian households could be made homeless in the coming weeks because current hosts are unable to continue their sponsorship agreements. One mother from Ukraine whose child goes to school in Hawkehurst now has nowhere to live after her homestay ended. I didn't expect that it, was, uh, it will be so difficult to find uh, the accommodation uh, even if you have money and you want to rent and you have a job. It's very difficult. And during uh, maybe four months, I tried to find something. A lot of people tried to help me. Well, Charlie Rose has been looking at this and joins you now. Charlie, a very stressful time for Hannah and, and other people like her. Yes, early research by, by the BBC has found that around 51,000 people who came to the UK under the Homes for Ukraine scheme have now reached the end of their six-month uh, sponsorship period. And Kent County Council uh, reckons that as many as 500 more households uh, could become homeless because current hosts are unable to continue and they're desperate for more host families to come forward. Uh, now, this morning, I went to see Laura Clout, who's a mother of three and lives in the Seven Oaks area, and she became a host in April. They're really considerate, um, really hard-working, um, just fun people to be around and we just we just happen to get on we always have and the children now are like siblings I know this means they fight like siblings but most of the time they have lots of fun together 
they wrestle together, all four of them on the floor. There's lots of, of squeals of, of fun, usually. Now, things don't always run smoothly, of course. Uh, this morning, I spoke to a man in the Seven Oaks area who works uh, with refugees. He says there are often cultural differences and practical problems to overcome, uh, including transport to schools and shops and so on. But he says a lot has been learned over the past few months. Now, the government has just offered additional financial support, totaling many millions of pounds uh, to families. And a spokesman said they have a duty to ensure families aren't without a roof over their heads. Charlie, thank you. Now, for any child, meeting Father Christmas is a magical moment, but even more so for Yasmin, a little girl from Sussex who's managed what many thought was impossible. After a tumour damaged her spinal cord when she was a baby, doctors thought she may not survive, and if she did, would be unlikely to ever walk. But after treatment at a neurological therapy centre, Yasmin has made great progress and taken some important first steps into Santa's grotto. Simon Marks has the story. Two. One. Four-year-old Yasmin enjoys her sessions at this neurological rehabilitation centre in Crawley. To her, it feels like a game, but when she was born, things looked very different. Yazzie was just under three months old. Um, I noticed that she wasn't moving her legs, and then it kind of went from zero to 60, as it does. Um, and suddenly we were blue lighted to Southampton and they told me that she had a spinal cord injury, she wouldn't move, they reckoned it was due to a tumour that had infiltrated into her spine that had caused a spinal cord injury. This all happened on the 17th of December, so Christmas, just stuck in hospital, she got given a less than 5% chance of survival. Yasmin underwent treatment, including chemotherapy. Luckily, the chemo worked brilliantly, and I was a bit like, OK, now what are we doing about her legs? The damage to Yasmin's spinal cord made it unlikely she would be able to use her legs. But Jessica, a paediatric nurse herself, remained optimistic. We kind of found a little wheelchair. It meant that she could go explore the outside world a bit better rather than being stuck up inside. OK. Then Yasmin started attending NeuroConnects, where staff began working with her in the hope of stimulating some movement. That's it. Ready? We provide therapy in a fun and kind of creative way where we're trying to help excite their nervous system and try and encourage as much recovery as possible while still making it fun and enjoyable. After two years of therapy, Yasmin has achieved what seemed impossible. She's on her feet. And now there's one more special person she'd like to meet. She wants to take some steps to go see Santa and she wants to try and do it without her crutches. Who's come to see Santa? Is that Yasmin? Good news. There's an extra special Christmas prezi for lovely Yasmin. Thanks, you, Santa. <laughs> oh, the pleasure's all mine. Before you go to sleep, if you look out your window and you see a shooting star, that's me on my sleigh. And you go, Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, everybody. What a sweetheart. Well, time now for a look at the weather. Nina Ridge is with us. I've been driving past a snowman all week on my way to work. He hasn't melted at all. No, it is cold out there. For a lot of us, we're still below freezing at the moment. It's only really around the coast where temperatures are around about two degrees. And this cold weather will stay with us for tomorrow once again, with temperatures well below freezing first thing in the morning. And despite it being dry with some sunshine, they will still struggle. It is bright out there. It's crisp. Temperatures, perhaps for a few of us, getting around about one to two degrees as I mentioned two or three I think around the coast at best so then with clearing skies tonight temperatures really falling away we may just pick up a few showers down towards the southeast but they're passing they just add to the ice problem because of course through the night everything is freezing we're looking at lows once again of minus five to minus six degrees possibly a little bit of mist and fog around first thing tomorrow morning but that should gradually clear we'll see some bright or some sunny spells through the afternoon but it is another day that will feel very cold with temperatures just above freezing. It's not until Sunday that we'll see the arrival of the milder air. We'll look forward to that. Thank you very much, Nina. That's it from me for the moment. I'm back uh, later on, though, 6.30. Hope you can join me then. Bye-bye. <laughs>